May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. So in today's Gospel, we are again with John the Baptist as we were last week, but now we are in the Gospel of John rather than the Gospel of Mark. This year, year B, we read a lot from both Mark and John. And, and it's different a bit, isn't it? Because we, we talk about John being a, a witness, a witness to the light. And if you remember from other Gospels, you will know that John the Baptist was the son of one of the chief, of the chief priests at the, at the temple. And I'm sure there are those who thought that that's what he would do with his life. He would be a preacher and he would be the chief priest, he would be in the temple. And instead, he's out at the River Jordan in the wilderness where there's not quite as much comfort. There's more freedom, but less comfort. And thousands of people are coming out to him all the time. And I'm not exactly sure what was happening at the temple, but they were either getting nervous or they were angry. But something was happening, and they wanted to know who John thought he was. What do you think you're doing out here? So they come and they ask him. And they don't specifically say, are you the Messiah? Apparently, though, that was kind of in the air. Probably John had heard other people say it. And so as soon as they say, who are you? He says what? I am not the Messiah. He's very clear there. I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the prophet. I'm not Elijah. I'm not all of these things you're looking for. Well, who are you? I am the one who cries out in the wilderness preparing the way of the Lord. And I hope that you notice this thing about John. John is really clear about who he is and what his mission is. He is not at all hesitant to express it. He has made dramatic changes in his life, moving from Jerusalem to out by the River Jordan, clear about his call, clear about his message, and uses the freedom that allows for him to be a, a critic of the king. He will later get into great trouble because of that. And it made me wonder, how good are we, you and I, at knowing not only who we are, but who we're not? I hope every morning when we wake up, we look in the mirror and say, well, I'm not the Messiah. That would be a good thing because we're not. But what are we? And I ran into a couple of quotes. I wrote them in my little quote book here about just that, about the importance of knowing who you're not. The, uh, the first one was by um, Paolo Cello, who said, maybe the journey isn't so much about being, becoming something. Maybe it's about unbecoming something that really isn't you so that you can be who you were meant to be in the first place. And that reminded me so much of the work we've done in churches, I've done in churches before, about mission statements. Because, I mean, as soon as you say they're going to do a mission statement, half the vestry rolls their eyes. But the, the purpose of a mission statement is to help you know when a new idea comes up, oh, wouldn't it be great if we did X? that you could compare that to your mission statement and say, well, is this something that's in our, our mission or is this a really good idea but not for us? And if you don't know who you are and who you're not, then it's very hard to make decisions as to what you're going to do next because the next idea might sound good, but is it for you? And that's a question. The other quote I found was from Howard Thurman. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. And I think that's important too when we're creating our mission statements for ourselves and when we're, when we're trying to understand what it is we're called to do and what we're not called to do. There are a lot of people who want you to do stuff that doesn't give you life at all, that would just grind you down. But sometimes, especially in the name of, of goodness or the name of the church, they'll say, yes, but we need someone to do it, so you do it. And we come into our ministry not with joy, not with a, an answering to a call, but with this feeling of guilt, of weight, and joylessly we do the work and things around us die because we are dead inside. 
And so I'm hoping in this season of Advent, while we're saying to stay awake, that we are waking up to our own souls as well. What brings you life? What is God calling you to? What were you created to be? Remember this. You were made in the image of God, which means inside of you is that bright, shining piece of Godness. But many of us, through our lives, have taken on message after message after message that dulled that down. And we started to believe those messages. And we, we took them into our, into our souls, and we took them into our minds, and we took them into our hearts. And we believed them to be true, and we thought they defined us. I was at the Wild Goose Festival a few years ago and sitting ne next to this man, I'd only recently met him, he was a friend of a friend, lovely man named John, Johnny. And what they asked us to do was take a pen and write on our arms, on our body somewhere, all the negative messages that hurt us. And we did. And Johnny was a gay man and he wrote the word fag on his arm. And it broke my heart the nicest fella in the world, and he had that horrible word written right there on his arm. And then the next thing they asked us to do is to take uh, some sort of, of cloth and wipe that word off, but not from ourselves, but from the person next to us. So I got to erase that from Johnny's arm. And he wrote, he took words off of my arm. And there was a freeing in it because those words, they, they're said by people with such harshness and such judgment that we start to believe that they have something to do with us. That we are those things. That we are, maybe we feel that we're too old because somebody said there's some number at which time you're too old. Or maybe you think you're too fat because somebody said that there's a, a way you have to live in the world and if you don't live that way, well then you're, you're bad. Or maybe something just about you. You can't be whatever you want to be because you are this other thing. And they've attached words to it. And, and part of what I think John the Baptist tells us in that baptism story is that we need to wash off that stuff. Not only wash off our sins, but wash off all of those negative messages that have nothing to do with us. Somebody else's perception that we have stepped into. And when we think about baptism, let's us also think about washing all that off. Because inside all of us is that precious, beautiful child of God in whom God delights. And sometimes we don't even ourselves know that we, anybody could delight in us because we've taken on all these messages, all of this, this baggage, all of these things. So whether it's about race or sex or gender or ability, uh, how many people are, are dyslexic and have been told they're stupid? How many people just learn a different way, but they've been cast aside, taken out of the good groups and put in the, the other groups? And they took that on themselves, and we need to wash that off to get rid of it and to, and to stand there with John at the River Jordan and walk in that water turning away from our sins, because of course some of the things that are wrong are things we've done, our own misbehavior. We want to turn away from that, and we want to turn away from these false messages, and we want to walk out clean and cleansed and knowing who we are. It's, hard, it's important work, my friends. It's, it's not easy work. God can see who we are. God came to redeem us, but we don't always see it. I heard a woman uh, doing a podcast, and she said, uh, she was a therapist, and she said her job was to, to tell people who they're not. And I hope you have someone in your life who can tell you who you're not. All of the labels that you have, all the things you've written on your arms, all the things that have been written in your soul, someone who will tell you who you're not. And if you don't have that person, call me. Because I will tell you who you are. You're a child of God. You are beloved. And it is your mission, in whatever way you live your life, to be a witness to the light, the light that is inside of you, the light that is our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the light who is the Father and the light who is the Holy Spirit. You are called to be that witness. May you find that place. May you be that person. And may you know how much God loves you. I pray that for you and I pray that for me.